What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Episode 10, headed into week 10. The Cleveland Browns on a bye week, off of a loss to one Los Angeles Chargers. And uh, Miles Garrett had a great game. Uh, besides that, yeah, that's all we got for the Cleveland Browns. Thank you for go- thank you guys for watching today's episode. It's over. We're done. It's a short it's episode. Not much to talk about here. <laughs> um, I know, I know, Dante. Uh, in our NFL Pickems Weekly, you did pick the Browns. I don't know if you really believe that when you did. Um, I did. And I, I picked the Chargers. And our Steelers fan on the podcast also picked the Browns surprisingly, because um, he's a hater. So. How did you feel watching the game and Jameis coming out and throwing three picks for us? Um, I felt like a fool. You know what they say, uh, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, you can't get fooled again, or whatever uh, George Bush said that one time. <laughs> nah, but... Kanye? I should have known, like, I don't know what we got our hopes up for. Like, it was a good win, let's be real. I'm one of those weird sports fans that thinks that when somebody from the organization dies, that team always wins that week. Dick Buckus, Franco Harris. Like, I'm sure you can go on I mean, and on and on. We did against the Ravens. Exactly. Yeah. So, exactly. That's where I'm going. So we should have known that <laughs> that was strictly because of that. That was it. Next week is back to reality. And you know what I thought of? What? Remember you were talking about Jameis coming in and not getting our hopes up because after his first game he started, I think, as a Saint, he did it almost exactly this. In the next game, he like had like 100 yards or something like that. Welcome back. History once repeats itself again, doesn't it? He is who he is. Um, I mean, of course, I thought the game was going to go a little different, but fool me, Cleveland. You fooled me. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a rough day. I mean, for our offense, defense, and special teams, all in one, yeah. didn't look good. And, um, yeah. I mean, our defensive line played good. Um, our defensive line actually got to the quarterback, and we played the run decently well, although the what, Chargers... Yeah, around there. I mean, every, a lot of players got tackles for losses as well. And um, I know... You know, the Chargers don't have the best run game in the NFL. They had, you know, the first two weeks where they went crazy, but since then, no, not mm-hmm. really. So is that really to our D line or just not them not having a good run game? Who knows? We'll see as the, you know, season progresses. But like to go to offense, we'll talk about Jameis since we talked about him a little bit already. But yeah, he is who he is. And um the one thing that we see different from him and Deshaun is he's not afraid to throw the ball because what does he have to lose? Nothing. Everyone knows who Jameis is. He don't even care. He probably yeah. does a little bit, but it's not going to change his career at all. Yeah. And, I mean, Nick Chubb looks like Nick Chubb decently. I mean, you see the vision. He A lot of the times on pass blocking, he'll pick up that linebacker blitzing in or maybe the D end or a D tackle that gets through and pretty damn good chop block here and there. Uh, but he's not fully, you know, back to being Nick Chubb. And I saw a lot of people talk about it, that this injury, it's not like he just had a minor tear. He just, he destroyed everything in his knee, everything. Yeah. He's got a whole new leg essentially. <laughs> not, not just an MCL, not just an ACL, everything. <laughs> And, um, no, you're good. And it's probably going to take a year or two from when he started to come back to be that Nick Chubb that he once was averaging five and a half yards per carry. It's just not going to happen right away. He doesn't have that explosiveness yet. Um, but you know, from the offense, not very good. The, the, the shining parts of it is Cedric Tillman looks all right. Uh, better than all right. He looks good. And, uh, Judy looked good. Judy looked good. Elijah Moore's on a rookie contract still, so that's a good thing, maybe. Um, Dewan Jones, I guess, uh, starting at left tackle, will start next week, I believe, at left tackle. He showed promise. Um, and, I mean, that's, that's about it for the offense. I know I'll let you spew a little bit on the offense, and I have a little bit of stats about our offense as well. Um, so the offensive line uh, went back in reverse again. Um, Jameis was put on his back a lot. 
granted, uh, the Chargers do have a pretty good defensive line. They do have a solid defense. Um, Jameis just didn't look the same. Wasn't getting the ball out quick. Wasn't decisive. Um, I don't know if there was a different game plan from this week to last week, but all the people who were crazy about Ken Dorsey, oh, Kevin Stefanski's play calling was the problem. I'm back down to reality now, people. Welcome back. I'm back down to reality. Welcome back. Here we are. Two and seven. It's a bye week, and somehow we're still going to lose. But listen, I've been saying it since maybe week two. The, the, it's too far gone. We got seven losses now. Playoffs are out the window. Yeah. Out the window. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you and I realized that after we were two and four, or what, yeah. one and four at the time. And uh, it's like we kind of had, you know, no more hope going into it because we saw what Deshaun and that O-line looked like together. Not very good. Right. And um, Yeah, I mean, I think at, at this point you're just looking at the offensive line hopefully staying healthy, um, skill position players hopefully staying healthy because the people that you do have right now, even though the team is playing garbage, they're not garbage at the same time. There's yeah. potential there. You know what I mean? So, like, a couple pieces here and there, if you make good off seasons, good off season moves, possibly some trades, you can be back in not contention, being competitive next yeah. season with the proper moves. Sometimes it only takes one off season. So realistically, I think um, the rest of the season season is going to be about building like team morale, you know, moral victories, <laughs> not actual victories in the win column. Seeing what you, you know. have in, in the players that you have yet to play a lot in. Yeah. Yeah. Throw Jamari Thrash in there. Get DTR in there. Let D, like, I think this is the perfect transition now because no team likes to look like they're obviously tanking. So Jameis looked like garbage last week. We, he got we hit a lot. You know? We already know who he is. Yeah. Put DTR back in. And Let him have some fun. Let him play. See if he is going to be your backup the next couple seasons or not. And I, I think he probably will be the only problem. I mean, I think we know that he's not going to be the franchise QB. One, no. he does like to get tiki tacky hurt. Uh, he's he doesn't have the the build to get hit he's constantly. And um, I mean, he hasn't played a lot of games either. Like he hasn't had that prep at getting those number one reps throughout practice. Usually, when he right. starts, it's a surprise. You're you're in the game now, and. Uh, you know, let's say Jameis plays one or two games, but you're preparing DTR to play the rest. Uh, that's a good move. I think you get, you get to see what you get out of DTR. If he plays well, you know, maybe moving on to next year, you know, he's worth something. Maybe you trade him away, whatever. Um, I will hit on the offense here real quick. Um, I did see this on Cleveland Browns Daily per Nathan Zagura that uh, we did talk about Cedric Tillman a little bit. Uh, through the last three weeks, he is tied first among all wide receivers with at least 32 targets. Yeah. Um, well, he's yeah, he's tied first with all receivers with 32 targets. That's the most. Uh, he's tied second with three touchdowns, fifth for 255 total yards receiving, and second with 403 air yards. So, you know, Jameis just letting that thing go in the air. Deep balls to to Tillman for the most part. And uh, fantasy owners, have you ever started him? Uh, he's number one over the last uh, three weeks in PPR leagues. So is Cedric Tillman a pickup? Maybe it looks like. I mean, the last three weeks he's been putting up some numbers for people. Um, I'm gonna check waivers and see. And I mean, we that's a pretty, pretty good cover for our offense. I mean, we kind of know uh, Jedrick Wills uh, will get to it. Might be traded, who knows, but if we keep him, he might be moved uh, to right tackle, maybe he can play guard, who knows what you can get out of him, but definitely not going to be in at left tackle. Uh, I think they should keep him. I don't think he has much value, to be honest. So you might as well keep him and just move him around and see what you got. This this rest of the season is just an experiment. It's yeah. a science experiment. You're just going to be throwing shit inside of beakers trying to see what sticks and blows up. <laughs> that's really yeah, it basically so i mean we'll we'll move to the defense real quick uh and then we'll we're gonna move to obvious trade rumors and what players we would like to see and what players would like maybe to go a little bit just to get some value out of them um 
Our defense, Miles Garrett, like we said, three sacks. Uh, those four plays in a row that he had, or three plays in a row that he had, were absolutely insane. Um, our defensive line looked good. Uh, and mm, DBs, we had a little miscommunication in the backfield multiple times, uh, giving up Two deep touchdowns. Yep, giving up deep balls to Quentin Johnston and uh, Palmer, uh, wide open, just wide yep. open for touchdowns. And um, they did talk about it a little bit, um, but the blown coverage wasn't good. And uh, there was a lot of communication to where Denzel was playing cover two on the one that he gave up and the team was supposed to be playing, you know, cover three. So he gave up that deep third and another, do you know, do you, do you know what I, let me interrupt you real quick. Do you know what I like about that though? That Did he, you see the post game pressers that he, you know, took the blame. He took the blame and then Juan Thornhill didn't shift blame. Nothing. He said, no, 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 no. That's on me. So like even in some of the worst moments, you still don't see teammates like calling each other out, which is good because that lets you know that like they're still playing for each other out there. Yeah. We just suck. <laughs> and I mean, we, we seen that throughout the whole year. Our defense looked like they were more of a together. They were more of a unit and together more than the offense was. Yeah. Um, especially since last they year. They have an identity. They yes. know who they are. Yes. Um, I saw someone tweet that, one thing one thornhill's uh entering pretty close to andrew sandejo territory i did uh, see that too. i don't think it's that bad <laughs> i don't think it's that bad i think there's a little overreaction right there but um i mean yeah. you didn't have one of your major leaders in the defense there like jok is a, yeah you know what i mean like come on now like he he might not be he's still a part of the secondary you know what I mean? He drops into coverage a lot. Yes, he does rush sometimes. But he drops into coverage. He is a big piece to that defense. So, like, him not being there, you could see that they missed him. Like, s- simple as that. And I think he's undoubtedly a Pro Bowl linebacker. Um, obviously, he's... He's our second best defensive player. He snuck in last year, although I don't think he deserved to sneak in. I thought he deserved to be an automatic Pro Bowler, to be honest. For sure. Um, he's our second best defender behind Miles Garrett. Yeah, and Denzel has looked a little shaky over the past couple of weeks too. Um, I mean, our our DBs in general kind of shaky. Um, that's really all I have for the defense. Our defense played good, but gave up a lot of busted coverages. To where we, I mean, it's week nine. We can't really have that miscommunication on you know what coverage <laughs> we're actually running. Uh, it's right. something that we definitely need to have pat down. And it's not like Jim Schwartz is switching up the defense. Uh, crazily from last year with signal calls and things like that. Right. Um, the only thing I have to say is is uh, something, uh, a sentiment that I've uh, been echoing over numerous episodes is, um, you know, my uh, want for the Browns to trade Miles Garrett. Um, you know, my buddy said, the defense played great. The offense played like shit. Wrong. The defense gave up two wide open touchdowns, which was 14 out of what the 27 they scored. And I mean, you know what's crazy? They did play good. They did play good slash great. But it's if you give up those two plays, that takes it all away. Yeah, and it's it's a different game. You're playing a different type of game. Only down 14, three, 17, three stuff like that. But I said this a couple weeks ago, and I also compared to. Uh, TJ Watt. Um, a couple weeks ago, when the Steelers played, was it the Giants? When the Giants were kind of storming back, mm-hmm. who who made a really big play at the end of the game? TJ Watt. Was it a strip sack? He might have. Now, let's go to our game. Miles Garrett had his best game of the season. Three sacks. Might be three and a half. They might have given him credit for one that he had with, um, um, was it Mohurst? I can't remember who it was, but, um, I think it was him. He might have had three and a half. Let's just call it three, though. Um, a ton of pressures yeah. lived in the backfield the whole game. Leads the NFL in pressures, too. That was yep. a graphic. I mean, by the end of this week, we don't know if that's still true, but going into this right. week, he was. But, uh, what did that do for us? Granted, um, no, it it didn't it didn't help us win, but it helped us to get us in position to win. 
I blame and that more on the offense. That is I a mean, good argument. And it's like the defense is not supposed to score you points. They're supposed to give you good field position for the most part. And that's what for you to finish the And job, that's what yes. he did. And um I I think the Lions would not I don't think they have I don't think they're gonna give up really anything for Miles. I saw forget who on ESPN or someone that had a mock trade, and this is from a viable person. I forget who it is. I know he's a famous analyst, whatever. Completely forget who it is. Three first round picks, Jameer Gibbs, and something else. I'm taking that if I'm I'm taking that if I'm the Browns. Uh, first off, makes no real it really doesn't make sense for the Browns to get a running back like Jameer Gibbs. Like we would just have both of them. I think I would just that's that's tr- Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb all over again though. Yeah, I mean maybe, but like for us that doesn't help our our future if that makes sense in my opinion. Those three first rounders on top of our first rounder does though. Those do for sure. Um because running back isn't a glaring hole that we need right now. Is it was my argument. Um no. but I don't think the Lions will give up a lot. I think what they could yeah. give up is something for maybe Zadarius. Zadarius Smith. Um, so we can go into our little trade rumor. talk f- for it now. Yeah, that was a huge rumor that um, that the Browns were trading Zadarius Smith to the Lions. It hasn't happened yet. I do assume that it will happen tomorrow. Um, so let's have a little fun. Trade deadline is in 24 hours, you know, less than 24 hours. Um, Today's date? Today is Monday, the 4th at 9.42 p.m. Trade deadline mm-hmm. probably ends tomorrow at what, like 3? 4. 4 p.m. I think four. East, 4 Eastern, maybe. I think it's 4 Eastern. There you go. So give me three players besides Zadarius Smith that you can see us trading tomorrow. So besides Zadarius. Um, yeah, you I'm, cannot say him because he's already, he's been the most the rumored. Main. So I'm going to, I'm going to give off a couple here. Um, the third one might be a little rough. I have two that instantly came to my head. I talked about it already, Jedrick Wills. I think if there's a team that is competing right now for Super Bowl and they just need depth or they're struggling with O-line a little bit, you go get a guy that has played multiple, multiple games. And of course he hasn't looked the greatest, but he's definitely a dude that's <laughs> going to be better than probably maybe your second or third string. Um, right. Next, one of our DBs, maybe Greg Newsom. Um, a lot of teams like the Packers, Washington, need some need some DB help a little bit in their push. Do we get rid of one of those? Um, and lastly, third, I'm trying to think of who I would really get. Like, okay, I got two more. Quentin Jefferson's look good and Shelby Harris's look good. Um, you can definitely get rid of those two because... I mean, they're not going to be in the long term for us. They're both definitely older players. They're not old, but they're older. And they can definitely go to a competitor that is trying to win now as well. So I can see yeah. those four okay. players uh, getting getting traded away for picks. Okay. Um, I'm in the same realm, a little different. Um, I'm going for value, guys. So I'm thinking... Um, Greg Newsom is definitely one that I can see. He was already rumored to be traded this off season, this past off season. Yep. Number two might surprise you. I'm thinking Wyatt Teller. Now I know you're thinking in your head like one of our best linemen. Why would we trade him? Well, you got one good lineman and a host of four bad linemen. Yeah. Get the value out of the guy you got. Number one, start from scratch all over again. He's still young. He's still very good. A little, starting a little injury prone, but I think he holds the most value for you. So Wyatt Teller, Greg Newsom, I can see David and Joku get moved. I can see a world where a team wants a good tight end. That's a position where a lot of teams don't have, you know, somebody like if you're the Packers, Tucker Craft ain't bad. Imagine if you throw David and Joku in with that group. Oh yeah. You know, if you're uh, a big... like look at the Dolphins, Johnu Smith. Tell me they wouldn't want David Njoku. Or a double tight end set with John and David. You know what I'm saying? I definitely could see that. So one of my arguments is I don't want to see Njoku go. If I am owner, GM, Cleveland Browns, I'm not getting rid of Njoku for one pretty big reason. Uh, I think he's a big part in the team and the morale of that whole locker room. 
Like if you think of Cleveland Browns players and how they play, Njoku is one of those dudes that is a Cleveland Brown mentality. Um, uh, Garrett Ward and Joku, those are four yes. dudes. And when you think Cleveland Browns football, those are the four that come to mind. Yes, and Njoku is young. Um, you can definitely get decent out of him, um, trade value and a lot of things like that. I wouldn't get rid of him because one, I think you can definitely resign him and he can be a long term Browns a, a Brown player. And um, I just think he's he's too not too good. Obviously, he's not great but i think he's too good to get rid of now uh i mean if <laughs> the only thing that sucks is the deshaun watson contract if we didn't have this um lingering over our head i don't think we would even be talking about trading a joku i think it'd be I mean, like the lions did move on from tj hawkinson and went and got sam laporta the very next year and i don't know what they traded tj hawkinson for but I feel like they didn't get as much value back because I'm pretty sure TJ Hawkinson take them 15 pick. So Lions sent TJ Hawkinson to the Vikings for a swap of several draft picks. Of course, it's not going to give me the list of them. Why? Why would it? Um, Lions receive a second round pick, a 55th overall pick, a third round pick, uh, which is the 73rd pick, and two other picks that were traded to one the Chiefs and the Broncos. Um, I mean, the Vikings didn't get a lot of not bad stuff in return. They got Hawkinson, a fourth round pick, uh, two fourth round, two fourth round picks, 2023 and 2024. And that was traded to select Dallas Turner. Um, so I mean, not terrible. Uh, I mean, the, the Lions lucked out in getting Laporta. I mean, they didn't get Laporta. Then it's, it's, they lose that trade. Obviously. I want to see what pick TJ was. Um, in the draft, yeah, I can look it up for you. Maybe, maybe not. Pick eight. I thought he was top ten. I thought so. Yeah. I didn't want to say eight. Yeah, he's pick eight. I, I thought I heard that he was eight. So, like, I'm not saying tight ends are just expendable, but I can see <clears throat> and Joku have them because at this point, if you're trading. You don't want to trade Elijah Moore and just get a fifth round pick. I mean, the only, just... the only reason why you would do that is because he's on a rookie contract. Right. That's the only, and he's not on a long term contract either. But that's the thing. Those are the players you need. Like, you need the guys on cheap deals. You need the Tillmans, the Jamari Thrashes, you know, the bring Dante Foreman back. You know, you need cheap players because when you got a. Uh, Osama Ben Watson making still $170 million on the books over the next two seasons. You, you got to reevaluate the whole entire situation here. Yeah, I mean, it's I. It's to rebuild with no money. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. And I mean, Deshaun eats that all, basically. Um, I just, I personally think you keep that core for the most part of a lot of those players, the young players that we do have. Of course. I mean, like our DBs, uh, we don't know what exactly they're going to be. They Last year, they showed like they were all top 10 corners at times. Uh, this year, not yeah. so much. So um, so you got to evaluate to see you know what they're really worth and try to sell high on one uh, before they're gone or before they leave, if that happens. Kind of like what the Patriots did with uh, a lot of their players uh, during the Tom Brady era. They would sell, sell them a year before that they should if that makes sense uh just and they a brought bit. a lot of them back too which is the crazy part you remember they traded us jamie they collins win. he sucked and they brought him back for cheaper and then he balled out for them <laughs> it's 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 also a system thing i mean you know they're they're comfortable there they're playing for a winning team uh we know jamie collins was not playing for a winning team with the cleveland browns when he was there um same thing with barkevius mingo he went to the patriots for a little bit too uh, I believe, right? Didn't he go People to the Patriots? Love bringing up Barkevius. Oh, I like. He you just has a dope ball. name, Barkevius. Barkevius, bro. That's just a cool name. Mango too. It's just like a dope. It's a dope name. Um, I'm gonna put like a jersey behind me where this picture is. I just need to <laughs> just just so at really, least like something cool. Um, but I mean, we really don't know, and you guys are gonna be watching this, uh, seeing the players that did get traded uh, come Tuesday, uh, and I hope. 
This is the players that I hope are not traded. One Njoku, Denzel Ward, <laughs> Miles Garrett, Nick Chubb. You know, those guys aren't most likely not going to get traded, but Trade I hope they do stay. Who? Trade them all? Trade them all, except for Nick Chubb. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think the Lions could definitely need some D-line help. That's probably going to happen. Uh, the corners, like I said, Packers, Washington, are in in the midst of trying to find some some players. The and, Eagles uh, could definitely use a corner. Eagles, I mean, they do have young corners over there too. Uh, they're probably, you know, kind of focused on trying to develop them. I would say. Yeah, I mean, they have. Um, they drafted Cooper DeJean. They drafted um, Quinion. I can never remember if they drafted Arnold or Quinion Mitchell. I can never remember which one they drafted. Yeah. Uh, but their secondary hasn't been the greatest. There's going to be some random Eagles fan. It's like, what are you talking about? The Eagles secondary has been ranked fifth over the last three weeks. But yeah. I watch the games, bro. They be getting torched sometimes. But um. I'll, uh, I want to leave you with this. Uh, where are you at on the Kevin Stefanski firing? Not if you want it to happen, where do you think, like, because that's going to be another thing that's constant. Every time we lose, especially going into a bye week, you just seen Dennis Allen get fired. We might see Matt Eberflus get fired. You know, uh, Robert Sala already got fired. I think so, uh, you're going to start seeing some coaches get relieved of their duties here pretty soon. I think that will happen. I don't think Stefanski will get relieved midseason, though. Um, although okay. we have done it in the past. Freddie Kitchens came in and you know, became the head coach over Hugh, right, after we fired Hugh. Um, you know, Freddie Kitchens was trying to cook it up, and cook we did not. Um, with that, I think we keep him for this year. Um, all depending on how teams play out in their rosters who I would love to see as a coach for the Browns and make uh, historical records with the Browns. They just, all they need is, all they need is 15, 16 wins to break the record, Bill Belichick. And uh, I mean, that'd be, that'd be like a full circle thing because originally that was one of his first head coaching jobs. Um, and he wasn't a bad head coach for the Browns back then. Um, and Bill Belichick on the Pat McAfee show today, uh, Darius Butler did ask him if uh, he was thinking, you know, of any head coaching positions that he might be interested in. Obviously, he went into his uh, presser coach mode and, you know, didn't answer the question. But he was talking about the Saints and how terrible of, like, the team it was for the most part. So he ain't going to go there. He's not going to go to the Jets. Um, the Bears, I could see him go. The Bears have a good defense, a promising young QB. Good talent offensively around them. All they really need is that O line, and that O line that they is pretty bad. They have a bad O line. Um, but shit, uh, we stay. I don't know. It, it's it's hard to fucking tell because Stefanski set up for failure again, and if he succeeds or just still fails, it's like he we were what we were supposed to do <laughs> for the most part. Um, because we're, of the Deshaun we're two thing. And seven going into the bye. We come off of a bye with the Saints. Let's say we lose to the Saints. Then we're losing eight. out. We ain't beat the Dolphins. We, That's the only winnable game maybe after that. We go to the Steelers. Loss. Probably 2 and nine. Then we go to the Broncos. Loss. Probably 2 and 10. Bo Nix might have at two receiving point, touchdowns on us. At this point... You're looking at Chiefs, Bengals, Dolphins, Ravens to finish off the season. We might you're split the Bengals. So you're looking at <laughs> we probably, were all right. at best case scenario, you're probably looking at four wins here. We've talked about this numerous times. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if uh, when they say the Cleveland Browns have fallen to two and ten, if um, I don't know if Kevin Stefanski is still at the helm at that point. And I'm not saying that's what I want. I don't want that. I still don't think you should fire him. I've been on here numerous times saying that he just hasn't had a fair tenure thus far. But uh, if he's 2-10, and ten, man, those conversations are going to be loud. Yeah, and loud. let's say he does get fired, right? Uh, midseason, interim head coach most likely would go to Jim Schwartz. You know, mm -hmm. it's like... He has the most, I mean, he's the defensive coordinator. They're not going to give it to uh, Vrabel because then he, has, he hasn't been in the Cleveland Browns organization as long as Jim Schwartz has. He doesn't even have a has. real job, bro. Yeah. He's like a consultant. He is, but like, he is on the field they, helping. A, he, he's doing more than yeah. just being a consultant. 
if they did that, they would be like, this is what you guys wanted all along. Why didn't you just say that? Like, yeah, I mean, I could see a world where Schwartz becomes a head coach and then Vrabel becomes DC and they're like working together. Now Vrabel made his money as a DC before he went to a head coach. He was a very good head coach with Tennessee. You know, he overachieved with, you know, I, I yeah, think yeah, he was a great coach. head coach with Tennessee. Yeah. He won the division and won 11 games. I think back to back years. Uh, yeah, Derrick Henry was going crazy, but he also had Ryan Tannehill at quarterback. You know, so I definitely think uh, uh, it's tough, man. I don't know. I don't want to see Kevin fired. I don't want to see a lot of players traded, but only time will tell, man. It's a long season. We still got a lot of time. And and as everyone that is listening or watching, um, I do want you to comment below how you feel about the Kevin Stefanski era with the Cleveland Browns and this season especially. How do you feel that how how he's been? Should he be fired? Oh, Do we give him one more? That's the title to this episode, baby. Is the Kevin Stefanski era over? It Is might, it coming to an end? It might be. And obviously, you guys are going to watch this probably post-trades that have happened. But if for whatever reason you're watching this before um, those trades have happened, I want you to let us know what kind of players you want to keep in the Cleveland Browns organization and the team and what players you might like to see go and try to get some draft picks and maybe some players back and you know draft capital to build for the future um shout out to Corey Bohorquez by the way oh god go ahead he's a great punter good punter obviously some punts not that great uh accuracy wise not the best but he got a leg on him but you can go on sorry um are we gonna have a Browns episode next week since we have a bye week um we might have a very short episode uh you know just to cover us going into the saints and if we did make any potential trades um maybe things happen maybe dtr gets the nod to start we talk a little bit about that um maybe we do a little mock draft with each other maybe we do an all-time browns draft because uh there's not a lot of stuff to talk about uh you know this year especially with our record uh, i didn't think we'd be talking about the same stuff every week at this point i'm not gonna lie i thought we'd be uh having different conversations and it, I was hoping that we would have different conversations for sure. Uh, it didn't happen. Uh, if, we, if you know, if we have five wins, we're having different conversations. We don't got five it, wins. <clears throat> so let me pose this question to you. I know I said that was going to be my last question, but is there a young backup quarterback or a young quarterback out there that a team might be giving up on that you would look at and be like, you know what? Rather than taking somebody in the draft and potentially missing with an early pick, let's see if there is a Joe Alt or, you know, a, some big game changer that's yeah. not at a skill position out there. You know, maybe like a, um, a few names that just come to mind. J.J. McCarthy, a Trey Lance, uh, Anthony Richardson, seeing if he's available. Um, I'm not serious about Bryce Young, but, I mean, he's just he's in the situation. You know, yeah. a Bryce Young or you know anybody like that is there or are you looking at maybe like an older guy like a Derek so, Carr like as as you posed the question the first team that I thought of is one their starting quarterback had a hammy injury we see Dak Prescott get hurt so we're gonna see what Trey Lance or Cooper Rush I mean I don't know who's gonna get the start over there it looks like Cooper Rush might be starting from but what I'm we might see a little bit of both obviously I mean Cooper Rush is five and one in his career uh mm-hmm. Maybe he is something, but he just has yet to, you know, have that opportunity, you know, to play for another team. Who knows? Um, But, you know, Trey Lance, you might see how that works out. Uh, Dak just got a huge deal. Of course, you're not going to go for Dak or trade for him. Um, Down Minnesota, all depends on how this year goes. Uh, Sam Darnold looks um, unreplaceable right now. So he, I mean, he's going to be a free agent come this next year. So with that, it depends on how good he plays. Does he choke the last five games away? And it's like, oh, that's the Sam Darnold we all know. And so his value goes down and they don't resign him. Or he plays great and potentially J.J. McCarthy comes in. He looked good in the preseason. Everyone was hyping him up as like usually the number one quarterback, you know, before he, he got injured. Uh, do they they have to choose one or the other um, for the most part? Unless they want JJ to sit a whole nother year behind Sam Darnold. Kind of like the Jordan Love thing. Maybe. 
I'm I'm looking at the fact right now that uh, Justin Jefferson is uh, on pace for about a 1,700 yard and 10 touchdown season with Sam Darnold, and uh, you're Kevin O'Connell, and uh, you're you're evaluating your quarterback decision. I think you're looking at uh, Justin Jefferson and asking him like, "Is this our guy? Is this who you like?" 1,710 is pretty good numbers, and if I'm Justin Jefferson, yeah, that's what I want throwing me the football. Look at what he just did for me. Yeah. Granted, he still hurt last year, still went for over 1,000 with a host of different quarterbacks. But I don't know, man. It's hard for me to think that they'll be something the same at And, I mean, other quarterbacks that might come to mind that obviously I don't want, but they might be in the discussion. Derek Carr might be in a discussion You know, by the end of the year. Uh, come next year, uh, he hasn't Drew very, Locke, Drew Locke, Sam Howell. Sam Howell didn't play bad for Washington either. He was like the Jameis of Washington. Um, these are just names. I mean, I'm not saying I want any of those guys, but these are just, just names just that we're talking about. I mean, Derek Carr, if he plays for us, shit, I don't know if we play the Raiders next year, but he might be the first quarterback if we lose to the Raiders and we have him to lose to all 32 NFL teams. He already, has, <laughs> he already has the record losing to 31, so shout out Derek Carr for that. Um, yeah, that's not a good stat to be a part of. No, and like you said, I, these are just names. Um, there's not one that I'm like, ooh, I want to try and get this guy. Uh, Sam Darnold, he's looked great for the Vikings. There's a part of me that's would still you, not sold on him. Would you want to Would you want uh, trade for Sam Darnold? Or sign Sam Darnold? Let's say Sam Darnold. I don't even know if we can afford him. No, because he's gonna be he's gonna be if he plays great, it's gonna be a thirty thirty million dollar roundish uh contract per year for him, probably. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to afford him. Especially if he takes him to the playoffs and if he wins a playoff game, that's around thirty mil per year for him. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to afford him. Looks like it's gonna be Drew Locke or uh, Anthony Richardson or Sam. See, I don't. I mean, I don't think the Colts would get rid of Anthony. I think you know he's looked not very good, but they don't have options either. They wouldn't just get rid of him and be in who knows where the hell they want to go with quarterback wise because they're not keeping right. Joe's not the long term, <laughs> obviously. No. But uh, no, he's not. None of those quarterbacks, uh, you know, make me very interested into next year and wanting to sign them. Sadly, um, I know. That you can go get that on our merch. I know ball network. Uh link down below. Twenty dollars for t-shirts, guys. You know, we have it marked down a lot just for you guys to get them, show support. And hey, I am talking a little bit about a uh a t-shirt. I don't know if I want to spoil it yet. Um, I don't think I brought I haven't brought it up to anybody. I thought it on the way home, actually. But uh just think of it, it's gonna be a, probably a white t-shirt, and it'll have letters all over it. It could be anything, actually. You don't even know what I'm even talking about anymore. It has to do with a rapper, by the way, so I'll give you that little hint. Um, but, anyways, any anything from Pretty you before? Bug. Nah, he might be from Canada. Yeah. Um, no, that's all I got, man. Just at least I get to wake up Sunday and watch football freely. Yeah, you get to watch. Nah, uh, not exactly. You got to stress about your fantasy teams first. Listen. I'm you cooking? Ass this year. You cooking? Eight and one and seven and two, big dog. Damn. I'm whooping ass. You're also five and three, I think. Or Ugh. six. You'll be six and three, I think, in our in our group hey. one with Rashad Jennings. Going into uh, Sunday's we'll game, it. I was losing one thirty nine to ninety nine. One moment. One moment. I had uh, the dynamic duo. Of Sam Darnold, and Justin Jefferson, I won one fifty one and one thirty nine. Damn! All and out. then I put up one seventy two in my other league. Oh yeah, I mean I had Jamar Chase. Uh, you know Joe Burrow threw for what like five touchdowns and Jamar didn't get one. So that's yeah, shout of, out to Chase Brown. He uh, he got one. Shout out to you for the Zay Flowers pick. I asked gotcha. that text Derek right before the game. I said Wandale Robinson or Zay Flowers. I know that's going to sound like a fraud question. Pat Sertan was on the other side. Excuse me for being scared. Zay Flowers, 100 yards at halftime. Let's go, baby. 
Yeah, I mean, the only thing in my head, I mean, Wandale might get more receptions just because of how that offense is for the Ravens. Uh, it's pretty run heavy. Once they get the lead, they were, they don't really need to pass. But you look at Zay Flowers, he's had a great game every week besides like one. So Yeah. Um, well, he'll be a must start from now on. Yeah, for now. Because um, Wandale had four. So, yeah. I mean, it's you can never – and quarterback plays also a question for whoever you have. Right. Uh, I had Cortland Sutton and Bo Nix in two different leagues, and it was one of the craziest notifications that you see on your screen to where Cortland Sutton Cortland just threw, Sutton. A t- threw a touchdown pass, Bo Nix receiving touchdown. I'm like, what? And it, and it was a it was a hell of a touchdown, too. Dude's a dog. Put him out receiver, line him out wide like like uh, Johnny Manziel with uh, Josh McCown and the Cleveland Browns uh, back when mm-hmm. McDaniels was the – was it Shanahan and McDaniel's uh, OC yeah. and like uh, quarterback coach? Uh, maybe we need those guys back. Bring those guys back. Uh, we we need uh, we need everything, bro. We're depressed. It is what it is. Yeah, we need everything. It's been about forty minutes for you guys listening. Uh, just us yapping about the Cleveland Browns. Uh, you guys, let us know any questions that you might want to hear from us. We'll comment down below to you. Do you want to see a little bit of Cleveland Brown merch? Uh, you know, from us, you know, we can try to make something happen uh, legally, you know, with it. So comment, like, subscribe. And hey, if you guys are watching still and listening, small favor, just small favor. If you guys do click on our videos, we're finally monetized. So you will see ads. If, if it's not a very long ad, like even a 15 second, I just ask of you to watch it all the way through because that is the only way we would get any money from it uh if you do if you do skip ads um we don't see anything from it now i don't blame you if you get a two minute and 30 second ad i don't blame you because i would not wait real quick yeah go go pee pee. yeah get up and pee uh go rub one just kidding thank you guys for watching comment subscribe we'll see you guys next week and hopefully the browns don't fuck up by week hopefully they don't lose (laughs)